For there are and have been philosophers who thought that the gods had absolutely no direction of human affairs. And if their opinion is true, what piety can there be? And what holiness? And what obligation of religion? It is right that these should be accorded in purity and innocence of heart to the divinity of the gods, but only if the offering is observed by them, and if something has been accorded by the immortal gods to humanity. But if they have neither the power nor the wish to aid us, if they have no care at all for us and take no notice of what we do, if there is nothing that can find its way from them to human life, what reason is there for our rendering to them any worship or honor or prayers? On the other hand, in an empty and artificial pretense of faith, piety cannot find a place any more than the other virtues. With piety, it is necessary that holiness and religion obligation should also disappear. And when these are gone, a great confusion and disturbance of life ensues. Indeed, when piety towards the gods is removed, I am not so sure that good faith and human fraternity and justice, the chief of all the virtues, are not also removed. But there is another school of philosophers, and a great and high-minded one it is, who hold that the entire universe is ordered and ruled by the mind and the intelligence of the gods. And more than this, that the gods also take counsel and forethought for the life of men. For they think that the crops and other produce of the earth, the variations in the weather, the succession of the seasons, and the changing phenomena of the sky, by means of which everything that the earth bears is ripened and comes to maturity, are gifts bestowed by the immortal gods upon mankind, and they adduce many instances which will be mentioned in the course of these books, and which are of such a kind as to almost make it seem that the immortal gods manufactured these precise things for the benefit of man. Against this school, Carneades advanced many arguments, with the result of rousing men of, intelli of intelligence to a desire for investigating the truth. For there is no question on which there is such marked disagreement, not only amongst the unlearned, but the learned as well. And the fact of their opinions being so various and so mutually opposed makes it, of course, possible, upon the one hand, that not one of them is true, and certainly impossible, upon the other, that more than one should be true.